In this video we're going to add the final bits of code to our login application and what we're going to do is just write in the final bits that we need to log the information to file. So remember if the user enters in a successful username and password and if the remember me checkbox is clicked we want to write that successful login to file. If the user enters in credentials that are incorrect, we want to write every invalid logon to a file as well. So we're going to have two files. We'll have a file that contains all the successful logins. So it will look like this. It will have a date and timestamp and it will have the username and the password that was entered. And at the moment, of course, we've only got one valid user, which is Joe Blogs and password Java. So there'll be some repetition here in our file, but you'll see that the date and timestamps all differ. So this will record all the successful logins once the checkbox is clicked. The other file that we're going to generate is going to be a file that contains all of the unsuccessful login attempts. So this time you'll see an example file here that has again a date and timestamp and it has the username and password that was attempted in each case. So this could be very useful for an administrator to go back and look at and see all of the attempted logins that failed and when it happened and what information was entered. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to our action performed method. And in our action performed method, in the branch of the if statement for a successful login, so in this first if that, that's part of our action command, we're going to check to see if we need to log the details of a successful login. So we need to check the status of the checkbox. In other words, we need to check to see if it's selected. Now, we'll have to do this before we clear up the text areas. So right in here, just after we set the labels up, I'm going to add in another if statement. So it's going to be if, and we need to say chk remember me dot is selected. So we're checking to see if the checkbox is selected. Is selected will return a boolean to say whether or not the, the checkbox is selected, which would be true, or false, which would be not selected. So if the checkbox is selected, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to be able to write that successful login to a file. So we want to log successful attempt to file. Now I could start to write lots of file IO code in here and open a file and write to a file, but as you'll see the login successful file and the login failure file are exactly the same they have a timestamp, a username, and the password that was entered. So rather than repeat code, I'm going to write one function that will do both. And this is the way it's going to work. I'm going to show you how it's called first, and then we'll define the function. So I'm going to just say log, and then I'm going to pass over a file name to this function. So in this case, it will be login underscore success dot text and I'm also going to pass in the username and password that was entered so to do this I'm going to get the text from the name and password fields again this will be txt name dot get text and I'm also going to pass over txt password dot get text because I want to log 
the name and password to the file. So I'm going to pass that information into this method log, which I haven't defined yet, but we will in a minute. Okay, so that's if it's a successful login. What about if it's an unsuccessful login, if the user has entered the incorrect credentials? Well, that's in the else part down here. And what I want to do on this is every time that happens, no matter whether the remember me is checked or not, I want to log every unsuccessful attempt. So I'm going to basically do the same thing down here. So I'm going to log the failed attempt. And this is going to be a very similar call to my log function and to my log method. Except this time round, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the name of the file. It's going to write to a different file. So it's going to write to login failures.txt. And again, I'm going to pass over the username that was entered and the password that was entered. So in both cases, I'm using the same method, except I'm just passing over a different file name in the case of a successful login and a different file name login failures text in the case of an unsuccessful login. So the next thing I need to do is to just define that method. Okay, so I can just do it up here above my action performed and it's going to look like this. Public void, it's not going to return anything. The name of the method is log and it's going to take a string for the file name and it's also going to take a string for the username and a string for the password. So it takes three arguments, a string for the file name, a string for the username that was entered and a string for the password that was entered. And then I'm just going to open up a try and catch block because the file IO stuff will throw an exception if something goes wrong and I need to capture that. So I can just output system.out.println and I'll just put a simple message here. Um, error cannot write to log file. Okay. Now in my try block then I can begin to open up my file object. So I'm going to use a file writer f out equals new file writer and I'm going to open up the file that was passed in through file name. So the file name will be supplied to me and that's stored in my file name argument and I'm going to use that here in the file writer. Now I want to append to the file every time I write to it. I don't want to overwrite every time someone enters in the incorrect details. So I'm going to say file writer file name comma true and that will open the file up for appending. I'm also going to use a print writer because it's a nice easy way to print to a text file. So I'll say print writer data equals new print writer and that gets f out as an argument. So I create my file writer and that now gives me a file out object and then I pass that over to my print writer so the print writer knows to output information into this file. And then all I need to do is create a date and timestamp. That will be the first entry into the file. And then I'll write out the username and the password. So to create a date and timestamp, I can use the Java date class. So I can say date now equals new date. 
and when I create a new date object so this guy this little variable here now is going to be a date object and when that gets created it automatically defaults to the current time so that's going to automatically check the current time and it will give me a date and, date and time stamp of the current time once I have that I can then make a string from that date and time so I can say string timestamp equals now dot to string so that converts that date object to a string and I can store that now in my timestamp so now I have all the information that I need to write to the file and to write to the file all I have to do is say data dot println and I'll write out the timestamp plus and I'm going to separate my file entries with a comma and this is pretty typical for log entries to have a comma separated, separated file or a CSV file as it's otherwise known the next field will be the username plus and I'll separate that with another comma and then the password and then what's left to do is I just close the file so data dot close okay and that's pretty much it so now we have written a function or a method that just basically opens the appropriate file and outputs a timestamp and the username and the password into the file now the date object that I've just used this Java date object I have to make sure that I have the proper libraries or imports at the top of my program to be able to use this so at the top of my program I've included import java.util.date and that allows me to use the Java date object so hopefully I have no syntax errors I can save that and compile and when I run we can test to see if this works okay so let's enter in some incorrect credentials again so Stephen is definitely not the username and password is not the password and I will click submit okay so we get invalid username or password the padlock remains locked and if we have a look at our login failures you'll see a new entry Stephen and password okay let's go back to our application and let's try a correct entry so Joe blogs and password Java and let's click submit now it shouldn't enter this into the file it will only enter it in if I click on remember me so if we have a look at the date and time stamp it's 1922 and if I click submit credentials are correct the padlock opens but when I have a look at the success you'll see that it was not entered into the file the last entry we have is at 1512 so let's try that again so let's say Joe blogs password Java and let's click on the remember me and let's click on submit and we have credentials correct and we go back and have a look at the file and we see there's an entry for 1922 which is the current date and time so we have written a new entry into the success let's go back and have a look and just test out if we get incorrect credentials again so let's put in username of Tom and password of 
let's just put in password one two three and let's click submit invalid username or password padlocks get padlock gets locked again and if we go to our failure logons we now see date and timestamp username Tom and password 123 so that's pretty much it for a little demo application we've seen how to lay out user interface components we've looked at the inadequacies of, uh, inadequacies of the flow layout we've changed that to a grid layout and fixed the size of the window we have looked at labels checkboxes JTEXT fields, password fields, buttons, we've captured events on buttons and we've looked at using labels to store images and how to change the image on a label. We've also incorporated some file I.O. and some logic into this as well. So this is a pretty nice well-rounded example that incorporates a lot of the topics that we've covered so far.